Right lads, how's it going and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to not only just a Manchester United preview but a preview towards the huge Manchester derby on Thursday evening from the Etihad in a game that's going to have massive ramifications on both sides chances for the top four this season. But before we get stuck into things about that, if you are still enjoying these United previews, do us a favour and drop a like on the video. Really helps me out. Let's me know you guys are still enjoying these uh, these previews. Also, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. But yeah, as I say, massive, massive, massive game, pun intended, on Thursday evening against Manchester City and Pep Guardiola. But... Without getting stuck into th that quite yet, let's have a look back at yesterday's result and performance against Burnley. I'm recording this Monday evening. But uh, yeah, a really good commanding performance. Controlled the game for pretty much the entirety. And similar to uh, the result and performance against uh, Sunderland a couple of weeks back, we did that without really having to get out of second gear. The big news coming into the game was the absence of uh, Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Obviously, he's ruled out and potentially even his season over uh, so uh, so yeah we had a massive hole up front but instead of going for Marcus Rashford Jose Mourinho plumped for Anthony Martial not on the left but straight through the middle and I think he did a fantastic fantastic job in just showing what he's capable of in that number nine area is there more to come from him there of course there is there's a lot more to come from both him and Rashford I feel but for a for a glimpse of what he can offer us I was over the moon. Uh, a couple of other good performances. I thought Bay and Blint, I think they both did fantastically well. I've been saying it all season that I think them two are my preferred partnership at the back. I just think they complement each other so well with with Bay's um, wanting to basically tackle anything that moves. And then you've got Blint next to him. He just calms things down and can pick a pass out from the back. Something we've been lacking on one or two occasions this season. So them two played very well. You had Ando Herrera, fresh legs, obviously being rested against Anderlecht last Thursday. He was all over the place, harrying the Burnley midfield. And then you had Paul Pogba. I think he probably has had his best game against Burnley. Uh, probably played his best game for about the last two months. I thought he was uh, really, really instrumental. Um, little bit of a... A little bit of a worry that he limped off with about five minutes towards the end and we don't know yet whether that's an injury or just an accumulation of game time and what have you. But, as I say, it was a good performance against Burnley. We ran out 2-0 winners in the end and it really could have been more than that, to be honest, if we'd have, uh, have been wanting to push for it. Uh, we got a goal from Anthony Martial repaying Jose Mourinho's faith through the middle. Then we had the returning Wayne Rooney who scrambled in a second just before half time, which pretty much killed the game off as a contest. Uh, we had a couple of half chances in the second half, but nothing, nothing concrete. Burnley didn't. I don't even think they registered a shot on target, which uh, says a how poor they are going forward and b how good we are defensively. Um, so, uh, so yeah, as I say, a really good performance, and I just hope we can carry that momentum and the movement which I think we've lacked sometimes with Zlatan in the team. He, whilst he's a, he's a fantastic finisher, obviously, and he's uh, we, we'd be nowhere near the top four without his finishing this season. Um, I do feel, and I said this a couple of weeks ago, that without Zlatan there, I just, and um, Rashford or Martial in place of him, I just feel with a more mobile centre forward, we are a completely different animal going forward. And we've seen that against Chelsea, we saw it against uh, Anderlecht in extra time well, after Zlatan had gone off. And we saw it again against Burnley. Uh, it's really, really exciting to see just how we could be lining up after Zlatan, really. I'm, I'm not saying he's not going to be a next season. He might very well be. I wouldn't mind it if he is. But if he's not the, here next season and we get a more mobile centre forward in, it's looking fantastically, fantastically well with that mobile front four uh, interchanging all over the shop. The defenders cannot live with it. And that brings us nicely onto the game against City. I think Rashford and Martial's movement is going to be absolutely key against a Manchester City side, which we've seen on countless occasions this season, don't defend well. I mean, Guardiola's even admitted that they don't train tackling and defending. 
And I mean, how? How can you not train tackling and defending? Absolutely ludicrous. But if they're not training that and we get Rashford and Martial running at their back four, whether that's going to be company, whether that's going to be Stones, Otamendi, whoever it is, I think we can really have a go at them. The worst thing we can do against City is what we did, ironically enough, when we played them at home earlier in the season, where we showed way too much respect for them, and we let them come on to us, and we tried to soak things up and hit them on the counter, which is way the wrong thing to do. And then by the time we actually started to have a go in the second half, we were two goals behind, and even then, on another day, we could have even equalised and got a point out of that game. So... It, the, the weaknesses of cities are definitely, definitely there. And I hope, I hope he goes with uh, either, at least one of Martial or Rashford through the middle. I'd love to see them harrying that City defence when they're in possession. I would really love to see that on Thursday evening. And the good news keeps coming that City may have actually picked up one or two injuries uh, in their extra time in the FA Cup semi-final against Arsenal on Sunday as well. You've got Aguero, who could potentially be out of the game. You've got David Silva, who could potentially be out of the game. That's two massive, massive figures for them that could be missing in this big, big game, which could determine, at the end of the season, who goes in the top four and gets Champions League football and who doesn't. Can you imagine Guardiola coming in with all the fanfare that he had and not getting Champions League football? <laughs> it's... It, 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 the not that you'll hear anything about it because the media won't report it, but it'll be absolutely ridiculous given the fact that he's, they've even spent more money than we have. But um, but yeah, I think we've really got to go for it against City. I think we'll get a point at the very, very least. I'm really optimistic about getting a result there uh, because as I say, City, whilst yeah, they can be good going forward, no doubt about that. We've seen that a couple of times this season. De Bruyne is a fantastic footballer. You've got Gabriel Jesus, who who is a very, very talented youngster. Looks, looks the business when we've seen him for the short period that we have seen him. Uh, obviously, Aguero, probably on his day, the best best player in the league for me. But, uh, but yeah, I just feel that defensively, they are vulnerable. And I think we've got exactly the sort of players to expose that vulnerability and I hope we do that on Thursday. Now that comes into the team selection a bit, little bit. Um, I think we're going to obviously see David Dea straight back in, number one, not going to miss a game is he David Dea, or at least not until he goes off to Madrid at the end of the summer anyway. But uh, yeah, we've got De Gea in goal, then in the, the back four I think it's going to be Valencia at right back. I think there's a reason why he was uh, rested against Burnley. Uh, so I think Valencia is going to come straight back in at right back. Centre back, I think we're going to see. Re I think we're just going to see the returning uh, Bay and uh, Blint because there's nobody else. Even though Mourinho did have a little bit of a pop at uh, Jones and Smalling in the post-match conference, uh, saying that if he was them, he'd be doing everything possible to get on that pitch on Thursday. But uh, it remains to be seen whether that's the case. But uh, I'm going to play safe and say they're going to go with Bay and uh, Blint at the back, which I think I think on its day can be good, good enough to um, good enough to cut what City can can throw at us. Left back now. I'm in two minds about left back uh, because Luke Shaw would be a great shout, but it's whether we want to go that attacking um, against a City side that have got pace. I'm not sure. Uh, I think he may actually play it safe, being Mourinho and being the pragmatic uh, manager that he is. And I think, or he can be at least, I think he will go with Damian at left back. I thought he had a good game, Damian, against um, Burnley. I think he was steady. So it wouldn't surprise me we saw him on Thursday. But then again, it wouldn't surprise me we saw Luke Shaw. If Luke Shaw was to start, that's a real sign of our intent for that game. Uh, in the middle... I think we're going to see the, hopefully at least, given, hopefully Pogba's fit enough. Uh, so I think we're going to see Pogba, Herrera and Michael Carrick against Manchester City controlling that midfield. At least that's what I want to see. It's our best midfield by quite a distance, to be honest. So that's the three I want to see in the middle of the park, controlling things, dictating the tempo and then giving licence to the three further ahead. I want to see Mkhitaryan on the right. I want to see 
Martial on the left, and I want to see Rashford through the middle, and I just want those three to just interchange all day long. I want them to pull. You could e you could even argue that we go with a narrow diamond with uh, Mkhitaryan in the camp position with Martial and Rashford up front in a two. If we were to do that when we get really in the faces of those City defenders, I think we could have an absolute field day. I really do. Really, really optimistic going into this game. And obviously, if we win this game and get three points on Manchester City, we will be in the top four for the first time in what feels like ages. It feels like a lifetime ago. And... We'll then write on Liverpool's coattails as well after they ballsed it up against Palace again at the weekend. So that's the team I, I think we're going to line up with, or at least the team I hope we're going to line up with. As far as the scoreline, as I say, I'm really confident, or at least not confident, I'm optimistic about at the very least getting a draw on Thursday, which I think wouldn't be the worst result in the world. But I do feel if we can really get out on, we can get all three. But... City obviously are a decent side going forward at the, at, the, at the very least. So I do think we'll concede. But I'm going to say 2-1. I'm going to say a 2-1 win for Manchester United on Thursday. And we go above Manchester City into that top four position. As always, lads, let me know in the comment section what team you think we're going to line up with or what team you hope we're going to line up with on Thursday against City. Also, let me know what you think the scoreline is going to be as well. Do you think we're going to finish above City? Do you think we're going to finish above Liverpool? Let me know in the comment section. And as, al as always, if you have enjoyed this United preview, do us a favour, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, follow us on Twitter at FudgyFC. And other than that, lads, I will catch you next time. Come on!